In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can get a dynamic sum based on a value selected in the drop down here. So, to demonstrate this, I have data which has months, sales, and running total. So if I want to calculate the total up to March, you see it gives me 1030. When you add these three, you get 1030. If I change this to August, then it gives me the total up to August. And see here as well as down here. Now that's what you are gonna do. It's very dynamic. It depends on whatever is selected in this dropdown to calculate the sum. So I'm going to start from scratch and I'll take you step by step how we can do this. In the meantime, if you are not subscribed and you like my videos, please subscribe. Now, I'm going to use three Google Sheet functions. Number one is the match function. Number two, the index function. Number three is the sum function. That will be one approach. Then I'll also show you another approach where I use the match function and the sum function. So possibly let's start up with that one, then later on, which I'll go to the more complex one that has functions. So to start off, I want you to first understand what the match function does. So the match function returns a position of an array. So I give it a search key, I search this one, and give it a comma in this range, and return me, I want an exact match, so I put zero, and it returns nine. So why does it return nine? It is because September is in position nine of the array that I gave it. So if I count from this January, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So September is in position nine. So if I take Jan January, it's position one, Feb, position two. Hope you get the idea. So what are we trying to do? What we're trying to do, we're trying to get the sum starting from this first value here. Then we may have to fix the row there up to sum. If you're trying to find the sum of up to March, so I'll go to C5, C5, when I do that, you can see that it sums up to March, like so. If I want to go up to June, I'll change it to C8. And there you go, it will get us up to June. So from just these two examples, you can see that the first, uh, the first range here, C3, does not change. So what changes is the C8 and C5. Actually, the C also does not change, but only the 8 that changes. So how can we make this 8 dynamic so that the formula knows it automatically computes that I'm stopping at March, therefore put B, I'm stopping at June, therefore I put 8. So one way to do this is to use the March function. So because the March, as I showed you, if you're in Feb, it will return me the 2, and if I'm in March, it will return me the 3, and if I'm in June, it will return me the 6. But when it returns me the six, uh, six will be here. In other words, it will be C6. I need to add on the first two uh, rows here to get to the tune that I want here. Okay? So that's how we are gonna build this formula here. Now, we are going to use the match function. So I'm gonna copy that and come into my formula here instead of inserting the eight, I need to insert the match function. So 
And because it is a reference, I also need to use another function, which is called indirect, which takes the text. And I'll have C first there. Then I need to attach my eight. And my eight is going to come from my match function plus two. Okay. So when I do that, I have to check whether I've closed everything. This closes the match function. This one closes the index function. Then I need to close um, function. So when I do that, you can see because June is selected here, I select January, it returns only the position, the value for January. If I change to June, you can see it sums up to June right there, okay? Which is the same as this running total here. So by just doing that, put indirect and then C and attach on this function here, which computes this match function gives me six, position six in my array, but then I need to add the two, to get the reference C8 that I want. So that's what is happening here. If you don't want to add the two, then you need to run your reference from the start here. So that is one way how we can do this. Now, the other way we can do this is to bring in the index function. Now, what does the index function do? When you look at the docs here, it takes a reference. For example, I'll take the reference of my values here, comma. Then if I say five, it is going to return me the value at position five. Three, one, nine, it returns this here. So count one, two, three, four, five. So if I put one, it returns me the first one here. So I don't want to keep coming in and putting in a one and two and three. I want to rely on this reference here, the value in the cell here, so that it can know that now you're in January, return this. So to do that, I'm going to use the match function inside here. Now, so what I'll have to do, I'll say match. I'm trying to get the position, this value here, comma, where am I getting it? In here, comma, I want an exact match like so. And when I do that, because June is selected here, it returns the value for June. If I change this to January, it will return January right here. Now, how does this one help us in our function? Now, we also need to know that when you go back to the docs, There's also reference here. This, this one, the index function can also take in a reference. So it, the array of cells to be offset. Takes in that array that is supposed to be offset. Okay? And as a, a reference. Now, let's see how we can use that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this. Then I'm going to say sum from C3, semicolon. Then the next reference is going to be got from this function here. So I close my brackets, enter. Now, because January is selected here, I get the sum of only January. If I change this to Apple, I'll get the sum up to Apple which is up here. If I change this to September, I get the sum up to September right here, as you can see there. 
So this is how we can do a dynamic sum using the index match. And also you can also do it the easier way as I showed you in my first scenario. I hope this has helped you. Give me your comments. If you have a challenge, please share with me. I'll be willing to look at it and I can make a video if very interesting. Otherwise, if you are not subscribed and you like my videos, please subscribe, like the video, share, and give me your comments. And with that, that's all I have for you today. See you in the next video.